but it's pr compared to most people on this call, I suspect it's uh, it's rarely it's rarely used. Uh, I have, however, been a modeler for many years, and since two thousand and two, have been running a, a reasonably successful uh, modeling course. Uh, first at University of Oxford, then when I moved to Glasgow, it, it moved there, and we were planning to move it to London School of Hygiene uh, this year, but um, uh, uh, with the current situation, we cancelled the face-to-face -face meetings this year, and we'll present it online uh, next year. Uh, for, for many of you who, who may know that course, or indeed some of you who have attended will know that we use Excel. I, I, I feel almost embarrassed at this, uh, at this meeting to uh, confess that we use Excel for that uh, modeling course. Um, and over the years, a number of people have asked me why, why do we use Excel when there are so many uh, other, other options uh, available? Uh, and my defense of the use of Excel, because I take uh, many, many of uh, the criticisms that have been made at, of, of Excel at this meeting, my defense has been that I see Excel as being really just a, a ubiquitous calculator that exists on everybody's computer. Um, some of you, I'm sure, will point out that Excel is actually a proprietary piece of software, but I think we can probably agree that it's it's although um, it is a proprietary piece of software, it is now so ubiquitous that uh, uh, access to Excel is, is, is not the big issue that perhaps uh, it is with more specialist software package, packages. So the existence of Excel on everybody's machine and the fact that many people will have been exposed to Excel, and I mean many, many people, uh, compared to perhaps the smaller number of people that are exposed to R, means that um, uh, we preferred to simply use Excel as a calculator. And we focused on, in that course, on helping people understand the concepts that they need for modeling, uh, rather than uh, rather than even really the the full range of Excel's functionality. I mean, a number of people have come on our course and said, ah, oh, but why don't you use this function in Excel or that function in Excel? Uh, and our feeling was always, it was better to help people understand the principles of what's going on when they're building a cost effectiveness model than introduce how Excel, for example, deals with matrix multiplication. Um, and so we, as I said, my, my defense is that we were, we were using Excel as a, uh, as a calculator. So my, I'm, I'm coming to this actually having observed over the last few years, um, uh, the increasing use of R, uh, having, having observed with interest uh, this, this workshop and having had colleagues such as Ichao and others uh, attend this workshop and derive a lot of benefit from it. I thought I'd ask what, what, is, what has R ever done for us? And of course, you know, apart from the transparency and the reproducibility, the functionality, the extensibility, the reuse, the efficiency, what, what's it really done for us? And of course, the answer to that and, and possibly the uh, answer to why R is increasingly uh, successful is that it's open source uh, uh, and free at the point of use. Um, so I wanted to just, and, and this is my second from last slide, is just um, give some reflections from uh, uh, somebody who has done a lot of uh, modeling in Excel about um, R and the direction of travel. And I'm thinking, uh, Jean-Luc, we'll, we will come back to those specific uh, uh, questions. So this sure. was just my initial take. Sure. Uh, the first thing I wanted to say is transparency is in the eye of the beholder. I saw the comment on chat earlier. And of course, you know, there's a danger that, uh, there's a danger that what I'm gonna say is not popular to this audience, but there's also a danger for you guys as proponents of R to, to get too caught up in the idea that um, we believe R is transparent and therefore the rest of the world should believe it's transparent. I, I, I know from talking to a lot of 
colleagues that they find are a long way from being transparent. Um, I understand the arguments in terms of um, in, in terms of being able to write and, and follow a script, um, and uh, I certainly believe having having seen the results of the uh, process that each hour led, I have I, I am certainly convinced that the the R code for our Scottish cardiovascular policy model is much more efficient than the original uh, uh, Excel version was. Nevertheless, I believe at least currently it's much easier to disseminate and have people look at the Excel sheet than it currently is for people to look at uh, the R code. So I would encourage you all to think about uh, transparency being in the eye of the beholder and what can be done to make R transparent, not just to, to uh, uh, quantitative types who are used to looking at script, but to, to think of it through the eyes of somebody who's much more familiar with Excel and think about how uh, R can be made more transparent to them. One of the lessons that I learned early on when I was doing models is that all models have errors. And one mistake would be to assume that just because R does have some advantages in terms of laying out the formulae, uh, is that that it's it's immune to uh, bugs and and errors? I believe that in modelling, the key to uh, debugging is replication, and I'm not just talking about um, Excel. Uh, I'm talking about any any model that's built. Um, uh, the only way to really try and um, determine whether uh, your model is fully bug free is to have somebody who was not involved in the original modeling process rebuild the model and show that you can get exactly the same results and i'm you know it was a uh, uh believe me i was one of each owl's minions who was uh, dancing up and down when when uh, we finally uh, saw that the r code and the excel model uh agreed um one comment I wanted to make was about open source versus reproducibility. And I think this is something that I'd be interested to hear from, from other uh, members of the panel. Of course, R itself is open source. And I wonder whether, I know the spirit of this workshop is that uh, everything produced for this workshop should be uh, openly available. But I do wonder whether if R is used more frequently for uh, commercial applications and supporting commercial submissions to bodies such as NICE, whether that will necessarily mean that those models will be open source. I would like to think that they would be, but I can see some potential challenges there as somebody who's worked on both sides of the uh, uh, commercial uh, divide. And then my final comment is about the, the uh, role of uh, methodologists. And I consider myself uh, a methodologist rather than a, uh, an, an R advocate. I can see many of the advantages of R, but I wonder whether uh, there's, there's a slight danger of becoming a software advocate rather than a methodology advocate. Um, it seems to me that R is a route to implementation of uh, methodology and not a methodology in itself and as i as i started out by saying our reason for using excel as the basis of our course uh, was we felt that it was a calculator and that we could focus in on understanding with just uh, uh, using simple examples from excel to support that uh, and this is my final slide because um, as somebody who has been inspired by uh, uh, to to start thinking about doing uh, modeling in uh, in R rather than Excel, I did also wonder about some of the other software platforms that have been um, proposed. So I took this slide. Actually, I'd encourage you to have a look at this DataCamp website that's got a very nice uh, slide deck uh, or info or what they call an infographic deck on um, uh, 
path, Python versus R. Because of Python, of course, is another platform which is increasingly being used for uh, data analytics. I'm sure most people here will uh, still agree that R is ahead in terms of uh, uh, functionality, but there is some sense that Python is uh, uh, catching up and that when you speak to, um, when I've spoken to colleagues and I've talked to them about maybe learning some R, some of them have said, well, why don't you learn Python? And so now I'm wondering, well, is it going to be that, you know, I'm going to invest all this time in converting my models to R and actually in five years time, it's going to be a Python for HDA workshop that, that's telling me why I should be uh, using Python. So again, I'm interested in the methods and in uh, getting them appropriately implemented and I'm less of a software advocate. So thank you for that time for my opening statement. I'll pass back to you, John Luca. Thank you very much, Andy. And uh, I should say, well, first of all, I agree with uh, essentially everything that you've said and uh, just a, a, like a, sh a small clarification. I think um, you're right that most of us are very much our enthusiasts and uh, we come across as, um, you know, maybe kind of militarized in that respect. But I think that the main objective of the consortium was not so much moving towards R as moving towards proper statistical software for the modeling. So I completely agree with your final point about there are other alternatives and R is just one of them. Um, the reason why potentially we focused on R and we settled on R was some of its advantages, for example, being publicly available as is Python. Uh, having a, perhaps a wider uh, or, or maybe less of a barrier to, to get into from the modeler's perspective. But again, I don't think that uh, any of us is necessarily whether to using R or die. I think it's more use the, 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 the tool that is fit for purpose rather than just going with R. But like I said, I, I would agree with uh, essentially all of your comments. Um, there are already some uh, comments on the chat, but if all the panelists are happy with that, what I would suggest is maybe we can have uh, opening statements and if you guys have slides, uh, we're very happy for you to share and talk through them. And, uh, and then maybe we can start a discussion proper and to bring some of the questions to the individual panelists. So Liz, are you happy to go next? Yes, I'm more than happy to go next. Thank you. Uh, let me just share my slides. Um, so, sorry, let me move a couple of things. Hopefully you can see that. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Liz Fennick. Uh, I'm a Senior Director in Modeling and Meta-Analysis at Far Merit, an open health company. Um, I've been in consultancy now for nearly seven years. Prior to that, I was uh, an academic, uh, first at York, um, then McMaster, and finally at, uh, at Glasgow with Andy. Um, and uh, like Andy, uh, I, uh, I, I have to admit to being a, a bit of an Excel fan. Uh, I've not got a huge experience with R. Having said that, I have done... Uh, a num I've been involved in a number of projects that have used R. And I, and I think for me, and I, I think this picks up on things that both Andy and Jean-Luca, you have said, um, and that's about identifying the right tool for the job. So, you know, um, just because I have a belt buckle doesn't mean that's what I should use to open my beer. Um, there, are better, there, are better, uh, there are better tools available. Um, and where those tools are, uh, are more efficient, I would tend to suggest people use um, uh, R or indeed other available software. Some of the projects that, uh, that I've been involved in, um, patient level simulations, discrete event simulations, you can do those in Excel, uh, but it's probably not your best option. Um, and so, um, you know, we do a lot of our data analysis um, in, in R. Um, and one of the things I guess that is a benefit of using 
R rather than R and then Excel is that you have just, if you're doing your data analysis in, in R, then what you, you can do is you can just literally, you don't have to take it out of R and put it into Excel, you can just move it straight over. I mean, I think we're probably gonna come back to this, um, but often that we find it's quite a job to convince our clients to move to R. So even in you know, these discrete event simulations or indeed in uh, treatment sequencing models, clients are very reluctant to, to move from Excel. Um, and I'm, I'm sure we will come back to that. I won't necessarily go into to my comments about that uh, right now. So uh, I'll hand on to whoever is, uh, whoever is up next. Thank you very much, Liz. Um, so I think Francois, do you want to go next? Uh, yes, I thank you very much. Look, apologies, I didn't prepare any presentation. It doesn't matter. You could just yeah. But I, I, but I wanted to share my thoughts. And before I share my thoughts, let me um, give you a little bit of my background. Um, so I, I work in the nice scientific advice. So we advise companies. <clears throat> to advise companies on their development plans and economic models. Uh, I also happen by chance to have also uh, uh, a regulatory background. I have worked in the field of uh, uh, regulation of medicines for, for 20 years. So I have, let's say, a view from, from industry, uh, if, I, if I may say so. On a personal point of view, I am a statistician and I really use uh, R as a data scientist for my own pleasure or for some parallel activities in the scientific advice. Um, so, uh, so um, and, and clearly, um, if you look at the, uh, our scientific advice activities, R is virtually absent from, from uh, any kind of projects that we receive from, uh, from companies. Uh, companies tend to, uh, as Andrew and Liz mentioned, overwhelmingly uh, tending to use a software like, usually uh, recognize software like Excel, triage, whatever. If you look before, let's say, uh, before the HTA process, uh, in the regulatory field, and when I say regulatory field, I, I mean the, the, the authorization of, of medicines, uh, whether it's in the, uh, the US, in the EU, SAS is the standard. Uh, in exceptional cases, you, you would have companies using other kind of piece of software, but SAS is, is, the, is the regulatory standard. So when, when uh, John Luca, if I may say so, when, when you say, uh, why should we use R? I see two different questions. Mm -hmm. First of all, why should we deviate from, why company should deviate from using Excel, triage, whatever software? And the second question is, why should they use R if they decide for methodological reasons, for statistical reasons, whatever, to use another statistical software? Why should they use R instead of Stata, SAS, whatever? So these are two issues. Uh, clearly, companies, pharmaceutical companies, uh, do not take any risk. Um, if, if you assume, if, if somebody was inventive and say, come to NICE, using uh, a model in R, and if this was to interfere with the occurrence of, uh, with the, the uh, technology appraisal process, this person would be in a very, very difficult situation. And clearly, I, I can see companies are, are not inventive in, in this area. They want to use tools they are familiar with, which were road tested in the past, and, and they, they will be very reluctant, unless there are some obvious reasons to deviate from, from this, from this uh, practice. And also it, it goes down to when I, my, our, uh, I would say experience, if they have to use a slightly more sophisticated software, uh, they, will, they will use the industry standard, which is, which is probably SAS or, uh, or something like that. So, um, 
So clearly there are some issues uh, on using R. So this is the current status. The second, the second question is, uh, the second question is what, what could be the advantages of R? 